For our next chef demo, by the way, we're going to have Nora from Salty Girls. Nora is going to be cooking with uh, some salmon, and I know that many of you tried the salmon uh, bites that were available at Salty Girls booth right over here, and it's a big hit, I've been told, uh, as well. So we're going to find out more about it right now. So Nora, please take it away. Sure. Hey, everybody. How's it going? It's awesome to be here. Thanks so much um, to the fine people at the aquarium for bringing us down. We participated in this event once before, and we're super happy. We're Salty Girl Seafood. We're a company based up in Santa Barbara, so happy to make the journey down today to share what we do with you all. Um, just a brief disclaimer, I am the only non-chef that you will see up here today, um, but that might resonate a little bit more with all of you, because I don't know how many of you are chefs, but I'm happy to say that I'm not. I appreciate everything that they do, um, but I am not an official chef, so bear with me. Um, but this, just a little backstory on what I'm going to show you today. This is a recipe that my family and I made from scratch using our wild Alaska salmon. Um, and it's something that we love to make as a family, my husband and I. And then three months ago, we had a baby and we fell in love with our freezer. So yes, yay for baby Marie. Yes, so we love our sweet baby, but it is remarkable how little time you have when you have such another little person to take care of. So I'm gonna show you how to make this product from scratch. Um, but then I can also talk to you a little bit about this product that we sell in the frozen section of retailers all over the West Coast. So without further ado, um, the first thing that we do is boil our sweet potato. And this takes about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and the great thing about this recipe is that um, everything here, it's like eight ingredients. And everything that you see here, you probably have some version of it at home now. So it's not some lengthy list of crazy ingredients that you've never heard of and don't know where to find. It's super easy and family friendly to make. So sweet potato goes in the pot and we're gonna get it boiling. And so um, sweet potato is a great source of vitamin A and fiber, a great thing to get into little bodies. And that's really the objective behind this whole product is how can we make fresh seafood, how can we make sustainable seafood more interesting and more fun for the whole family to enjoy. So sweet potato goes in and that's gonna be about 30 or 40 minutes. And we're gonna get that boiling and with about five minutes to go on that, we're gonna put the broccoli in. And again, it's a great source of fiber, it's a great source of vitamins. So broccoli goes in with the sweet potato, and we're totally doing this as seen on TV style because I'm not gonna keep you here for 40 minutes while a sweet potato boils, don't worry. So the great thing about this product is that it's super versatile. We're totally targeting this towards kids. How can we get more salmon, more fresh vegetables into kids? But it's great for adults too. So we're gonna show you today how to use this product to make salmon sliders. So cute little salmon bites on little um, sourdough bread with arugula and some, um, some um, chipotle mayonnaise. But it's also great as a salad topper. It's great to just toss in the oven um, and pair with tater tots, whatever you want. Okay, so now I'm sure you're all wondering where's the fish. We're gonna start working on our fish. And so today we're working with wild Alaska salmon. At Salty Girl, our mission is to source sustainable seafood. That's what we do. I'm a marine biologist by training, turned entrepreneur, turned incidentally mom these days. Um, but our whole focus at Salty Girl is getting sustainable seafood into people's homes. And so we choose to work with all Alaska salmon. So Alaska salmon is wild caught salmon. So we work with the awesome small boat fishermen throughout Alaska. And today we're working with coho, but we also work with sockeye. So you could go to your local Whole Foods, go wherever you feel comfortable buying wild Alaska salmon, and you can use coho, you can use sockeye, don't feel like you have to use coho. So we're just gonna put a little bit of salt, get our fillets ready, salt on both of our fillets, and we're using half a pound of salmon. All right, so we're gonna get our, our stove top up to medium heat, and we're just gonna put our fillets on. There's a little bit of oil in the pan, um, we do have, this recipe is in your booklet, if you picked up the booklet today, your recipe book with all of today's um, recipes. And we do have ghee as our, 
um, kind of conduit, I guess. Um, but I'm choosing to cook with olive oil today because that's typically what I do. So we're going to wait for that salmon to get going. And hopefully this, um, hopefully this stove top is working for us today. Um, so anyway, what we do at Salty Girl while this fish is cooking up for us, um, like I said, we are focused on sourcing sustainable seafood. Who here loves salmon? Yeah, me too. Who here loves wild Alaska salmon? Awesome. So one of the things that we love in particular about wild Alaska salmon is not only is it super high in nutrients, right? So it's high in selenium and it's high in iron and magnesium and all of those things and iodine and all those things that you can get from wild caught seafood. So that's one reason that we source wild Alaska salmon. It's also got those awesome omega-3s. And I know everybody hears about omega-3s. It's in salmon. What else is it in? eggs, it's in um, avocados, right? It's in walnuts, all of those healthy fats that we're being encouraged to eat more of. And salmon is at the top of the food chain when it comes to omega-3. So it's a great product for vision and brain and heart function, especially in growing bodies. So that's why we use salmon. And anybody, kids in the audience, do you guys eat salmon? Do you guys like salmon? Yeah, so kids love salmon. There's all sorts, Nura is in the audience. Nora loves salmon. She had our bites today. So yeah, so lots of good things about salmon, and we're cooking up here, it's going great. So when we're thinking about the fish that we're gonna buy, you always wanna make sure that it comes from a sustainable source, right? We're hearing that over and over today. And one of the ways to ensure that it's coming from a sustainable source is to make sure that it's traceable, which means that you know where that fish is coming from. So when you go and you're buying seafood at wherever you buy it, make sure you're asking where your fish was caught, and preferably if you're buying salmon, you want it from a trusted source, and you want it ideally from Alaska if it's wild, okay? And then you want to know how that fish was caught. So you want to know that it was caught using a gear type, so the way in which it was caught is also sustainable. And kind of on the, on the quality side of things, you want to be looking for this recipe for skin off boneless salmon. And that just kind of takes away some of the steps of taking off the skin. And if you're feeling really brave, you can totally buy a whole fish or you can buy fish with the skin on, no problem. But we're talking about making things easy, especially for mom and dads. Are mom and dads in the audience? Totally. So you, you know what I'm talking about. Making it easy is really clutch. So the salmon we do like three or four minutes on one side. We're just going to flip it over. We don't want to overcook fish kind of generally ever, right? Because nobody likes to eat dry fish. That's one of the biggest complaints about seafood. If you cook it at home, who's had dried fish? It's the worst, not dried fish, but dry fish in the oven or on the stovetop. It's the worst. Um, with this recipe, don't worry about undercooking it because it's going to go back on the skillet. You're actually going to put all your ingredients together and um, put it back on the skillet. So don't worry about, um, about overcooking. So while that's going, we're actually going to start to combine. So we took our sweet potato out, and you're just going to use one half of that large sweet potato. So we're going to put the sweet potato in the bowl, mash it up. Um, and oftentimes what I'll do with that other half of the sweet potato is just dice it up later and just use it for like home fries or something, right? Because we want to use everything that we're cooking. Um, and then we're going to add broccoli. So it's about a quarter cup of broccoli with a half of that large sweet potato. We're going to start mixing that all together. OK, and while we're waiting on our salmon, so we also add oats to our recipe. And it gives it kind of a little bit of hardiness, a little bit of graininess in the bite. And we use Bob's Red Mill Oats. They're gluten-free. So if you are you know, trying to stay gluten-free, this is a great option for you. If you're at home and you're like, uh, I want to put oats in, if you have Quaker Oats on hand, they do the same thing. Toss Quaker Oats in there. They're awesome, too. So we're going to add a quarter cup of Bob's Red Mill Oats. We're going to toss those in there while we're still waiting on our salmon. All right, we're going to get that mixing up. So you can see really nice green color. Great way to get some green, vivid greens in your meal. Really, really fun. Um, OK, great. And so we're actually going to add a little bit of salt um, to this mixture. We're going to do like about a um, teaspoon of salt. I know we salted the salmon, but just, just a little bit. Don't need, enough, don't need anything more than the salt. It's a really flavorful with all the veggies and the good, good strong salmon flavor. Um, so we're just going to get that mixed up and ready to rock and roll. 
And then let's check on our salmon. So it looks like we're doing pretty well over here. Just take a look. It should be pink. It, oh, so we need a little more time, but it's getting there. So we want to see that it's cooking all the way through. But like I said, we don't want to overdo it. Um, okay, so let's add, we're going to add an egg white. But like I said, I'm not a chef. So if I get the yolk in there, you got to give me a break. Okay, so here we're going to, I'm going to do this baking style. And the egg white is really just to hold it together when you put it on the frying pan. So don't worry, again, if you are not eating egg, if you're watching your cholesterol, whatever. Play around with this recipe. That's what it's there for. Really fun. Get adventurous. Same thing with the vegetables. Like I said, we want this to be something that, you know, you're at home, you can't figure out what to make. Um, it's easy to run and grab some awesome salmon, but you probably have, like, if you don't have broccoli, maybe you have kale. If you don't have kale, maybe you have spinach. So easy beans, this recipe. Okay, so now we're going to pull our fish off and get that ready. Turn our oven down, or our griddle down a little bit. And so I'm actually just going to use one of these fillets. Um, because we just need about a half a pound of salmon. And so we're just going to flake this with a fork and just keep an eye out um, looking for any bones. So um, when you buy salmon like this, it's called PBO, pin bone out. That's boneless salmon in the seafood world. But it's done by hand, so human error is possible. So just keep an eye out for bones um, as you're doing this. And we're going to add this nice salmon to our mixture with our vegetables and our egg and our oats. Okay, awesome. Good, so we're gonna get this all mixed up. And like I said, super easy. And the objective here is just super healthy salmon, getting those omegas, getting those vitamins and minerals, all those good things. And guys, I did it with egg whites. I didn't get a round of applause for that. Thank you. I've been nervous about that all day. I'm not a chef. OK, cool. So we have this awesome mixture. We've got our veggies. We've got our salmon. And so now, next few steps for our sliders, we've got this awesome sourdough. I'm going to get our little salmon bites going on the stovetop. And you can do this with your hands if you're brave. You can do this with two spoons, you know, like my grandma taught me with the way you do it with um, cookie dough batter. Um, I did it last night. I did it with my ice cream scoop. So you can make the patties as big or as small as you want, depending on what the application is. All right, so we're going to get that stovetop roaring again. And let's get our salmon cooking. And then we'll get our, our little sourdough um, teed up as well. OK, cool. So anybody here been to Alaska before, this place where this awesome salmon is from? Yeah, where have you guys been? Oh, you did a tour of Alaska. Were you overland? Were you in a camper van or something? Oh, man, that's amazing. Good for you. Where have you been? Inside Passage. OK, very cool. So don't you just feel like a wild Alaskan when you're eating wild salmon? I do. I love it. I love it. It makes me feel so healthy. This is a great thing. We like to eat these in the morning. Um, and I feel like in our office, you get bonus points if you ate salmon for breakfast. It just makes me feel like I'm on the boat in Alaska. You know, it's just pretty awesome. All right, so I'm going to add a little more oil. But again, you guys, this is not fancy. That's the beautiful thing about this. I'm a mom. I don't have time for fancy. OK, cool. So we're going to get these going. They're a little big. But you can play around with the size, play around with everything in this recipe. That's the best part about it. OK, cool. So we're going to get these rocking and rolling. Okay, cool. So again, a couple minutes per side. We like to get them. I like to get them a little bit brown. I like everything a little bit brown. But while we're waiting for those, we're getting our, um, our little sourdoughs teed up. Um, so we chose a sourdough loaf. We've made them before on um, Trader Joe's makes these cute little like pretzel buns. Have you seen those in Trader Joe's? If you haven't, go look for them. They're amazing, and they're perfect for these. 
Um, so super cute on pretzel buns, but also, like I said, great for salad toppers, great for anything. And so this product right here, like I said, is kind of the beefed up product of, or version of what I'm doing here for you live. This is the from scratch version. And so we've taken this recipe that my family started making and developing, and we've um, made it so that we can scale it up and bring it to your kitchen, but still only eight ingredients, still super simple, and we've designed it so that it's sold in the frozen section, and you can go right to your freezer. It's an answer to the fish stick, right? Who grew up eating fish sticks, okay? The fish stick has like not changed since it launched in 1950, okay? It's like breaded mystery fish, mystery fish parts. So we have designed this product for kids, a product that has integrity with all these awesome, it doesn't have to be um, breaded, it doesn't have to be fried. Kids are gonna eat it anyway. Great product to dip. Um, yeah, so that's how, this is kind of the, the mom, don't have time, you know, keep it in your freezer, and this is the, this is the learning experience. Um, but also, as I was saying, all of our products are fully traceable, so you can see on the back of every package exactly where and how your fish was caught. So this is Taku River salmon from Taku River in Alaska. Um, and you can see that it was caught with a gill net. And then you can go online to our website and punch in that code. And you can actually see the story of the fishery itself, the, the fishermen, the vessel. You can see the whole history of the, it's pretty cool to learn, um, you know, the backstory of your fish. Um, and it's a great way, something that we found, it's a great way to engage this new generation of kids. Um, you know, talk to them, start that conversation around what is good food? What am I putting in my body? And where does my food come from, right? There are faces behind the food that we eat. And hopefully, if you're eating really good quality, nutritious food, the faces are not so far away from you. So that's our product that's sold in retail now. So I'm going to check on these guys again. And once they're kind of flippable, I think I'm going to give them a couple more seconds here so I don't just totally, that one went. I'm going to give them a couple more seconds. Um, but I'd love to answer questions as those are kind of teed up on the stovetop. So if there's some questions, I'm happy to pass you the mic. So as I've been saying all day, Mike has the mic and I'm happy to share. <laughs> Any questions? For, here we go, right here. Does Trader Joe's sell your product? No, Trader Joe's Ooh. does not sell our product yet. Um, someday. I'm sure they will, or they'll make their own version and rip us off and sell their own version of it, <laughs> as Trader Joe's tends to do. Um, but that's OK. <laughs> um, no, so Trader Joe's does not carry us yet. We will be rolling out in some pretty big accounts. So keep your eyes peeled for us. Definitely follow us on Instagram, at Salty Girl Seafood. Um, we'll be rolling out in select Target stores in 2018 and across some of your bigger kind of local chains. Um, so definitely keep your eyes peeled for us and you can always follow us and get updates to where you can find us. Question in the back. I'm coming your way. Stay there, Taylor. You have your arms full. <laughs> Thanks. So Nora, my daughter, had some of these today and loved them. Yeah. I'm wondering if you're considering uh, any other flavors or combinations. That is an awesome question, and I was so happy to see Nora chowing down on salmon bites. They're good for all ages, nine months old. She's loving them. Um, yes, so we have, this is our first product. So this was kind of a new adventure for us at Salty Girl, uh, entering the kid and family-friendly space. And this is our first you know, trial and market, the uh, sweet potato and broccoli. But we have three more flavors that are following quickly behind. We have a carrot and cauliflower, um, which is actually Whole30 um, and paleo, if, you're, if that's your persuasion. Um, something for everybody at Salty Girl. Um, we have a, a citrus and sea salt. And we have a Southwestern with like black beans. And they are so good. Each one is better than the rest. So definitely stay tuned if any of those sound good. And you can imagine all the fun things, salad toppers and tacos and all the cool ways that you could use, um, you know, use those products as well. Any other, I'll, I will literally answer any, well, almost anything. <laughs> Here's a question right here. So all those varieties you mentioned are all varieties of the salmon bites? Yeah, so we're just using salmon for now. Um, those are all variety of the salmon bites, that like same kind of family-friendly idea. Um, but we will probably be moving into kind of other things in that space as well as 
playing off this same product with other awesome sustainably caught seafood. Oh, yeah, yeah. because my question was what other products do you plan to... Like what other kinds of seafood? Yeah. yeah, so we haven't figured that out exactly yet. Is there anything you'd like to see? Any fish? Like, What's your favorite fish? I like fish? crab cakes. I like salmon. Crab cakes crab are cakes awesome. Are so we have some cool ideas for crab cakes. We've got some cool projects going on, too. So stay tuned for crab cakes. You know, talking about crab cakes, we have this huge uh, Dungeness crab fishery right here, Nora. Yeah. Um, is, is that maybe a fishery that you might be able to work with? I would love to work with Dungies. We've actually worked with Dungeness in the past. Um, Dungy fishery is such a cool fishery here in California. If you have the opportunity to get out and learn about it, definitely do. Um, have you guys had Dungy? It's so good. So Dungeness crab is just a species of crab found off the coast of California. A lot of us have heard about the Dungeness crab fishery in the media in the last few years because they've had some problems with um, algal blooms up north and it's been shutting down the fishery and I think they've even had um, like state of emergency for our fishermen because their fisheries have remained closed as a result of what is happening in our oceans, increased frequency of algal blooms due to our oceans warming. Um, so we would love to work with, with Dungeness. It is a super premium product. Um, as well it should be. Um, so we always have to keep in mind things that are awesome and healthy and sustainable, but things that are um, family friendly and accessible for everybody from a price point perspective. You know, that, that makes the message even more powerful is that these, uh, just because we say a fish is sustainable now, doesn't mean it's going to be sustainable in the future. That's so right. you really have to stay tuned, just like you said. Yep, that's right. And there's a lot of great resources out there. And, um, you know, Cabrillo does a great job of being a stalwart for education in the community. So um, plenty of great resources coming out of this aquarium, um, coming out of Monterey Bay Aquarium. We're lucky that we live here in California. We have proximity to the ocean. We have great seafood locally here that's harvested sustainably. And we have these great institutions that do a great job of hosting events like this, getting out in the community and getting that awareness. So we feel like we're empowered to make good decisions for sure. So one of the things that we talk about here at the Aquarium quite a bit is how many of you uh, go to the ocean? <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad to see that. When you go to the ocean and you stand on the shore and you look across, what do you see? Water. Pelicans. Boats. Oh, well, good boats. Maybe you see a, a fin of a dolphin as it comes up or a sea lion. But I think my point is that there's so much more going on underneath that water including some of these kinds of animals that you've been seeing that we've been eating today. And uh, we're, we're removed from that in general, most of us. Because my next question is, how many of you go under the water, is either as scuba divers or, or snorkelers? Okay, look around for just a minute. There's not a lot of hands going up. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's why the aquariums uh, serve a purpose, is we want you to see what it looks like. So when you go into our aquariums, when you go to the Aquarium of the Pacific, when you go to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, you're seeing the way it looks like underneath the ocean. We all hire people that know what it looks like so that we can share it with you so you can then see what it looks like. That helps. One of the things that somebody impressed me the other day is that in general with our urbanized society, we are probably three or sometimes four generations removed from seeing the animals that we're eating live. When you go and you get chicken <laughs> out of whatever venue you get your chicken from, uh, how many of us see chicken on a regular basis live running around? Not so much anymore. And yet, three or four generations ago, that was very normal. You knew exactly where your chicken came from. You knew exactly where all these things came from. So these are things for us all to remember, that as our society changes in general, we have to remember that young people are going to need our help to remind them that the animals they're eating or the plants they're eating, where do they come from? And so these are very powerful messages. Nora. Yes. Okay. Have, I, have I wasted enough time? No. <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing great. You, you distracted from the, the chaos that was my plating these. So well done. Thank um, you. So we're just finishing these with some arugula. Again, guys, super flexible. You have lettuce. Use lettuce. I like arugula. It's nice and spicy. Gives it a nice little bite. Um, I'm going to do these like open top sliders. We can add this awesome. Have you guys heard of Primal Kitchen? Have you bought any of their products? Go check out Primal Kitchen. They make these awesome like avocado oil based mayonnaise. 
This is their Chipotle lime mayo. It is amazing. Um, awesome to add onto fish. So we'll just do a little like dollop on top. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, like I said, guys, not a chef. <laughs> okay. But um, anyway, so we'll be serving these up, the, the well-polished version of these over at our booth over in the corner. Um, if you have any further questions, I'm happy to answer them. It's I defer to you. <laughs> okay, so I think in this this is the time where if there are any questions. Literally, you guys, you can ask me anything. I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> I'm a marine scientist. I'm a mom. <laughs> how how did you become a marine an entrepreneur from marine scientist? That's because a great question. I'm a marine scientist, and I ran away from business classes, Nora. Yes, yeah. So I'm an entrepreneur in my heart because my parents are entrepreneurs and I think you look around and when you see other entrepreneurs, it kind of runs in the family. It's a little uh, crazy gene. Um, I grew up in a fishing community. I grew up knowing that what I wanted to do was spend my life on and around the water. So I set off to do just about everything you can do in the marine field and then got a degree in marine biology. I went on to work aboard commercial fishing vessels in Alaska, which is where I really came to understand the intersection between you know what we as fisheries managers and scientists about believe about sustainability and the role we play in sustainability and the role that fishermen and their families and their livelihoods and you know those things are very closely related um, and good communication is very important across all sectors and I realized when I was um, you know out on a boat in Dutch Harbor in a waist deep pile of fish thinking I think I need to take this to the next level and figure out how I can kind of be that link between the fishing families that I love so much and the science that I love so much. And so I came and got my master's degree at UCSB's Bren School, which is the interdisciplinary science program there, and took some entrepreneurship courses that were kind of just about out of the box thinking, right? Entrepreneurship isn't about business, it's about problem solving. And I think that that's what I'm very excited about finding creative solutions to the biggest problems facing our glo global oceans from a creative approach. My creative approach was starting a business, but there are lots of ways to skin that cat. Um, so yeah, so that's my path. Nora, I don't think I could have wrapped it up even better. That was wonderful. Let's give her a hand, please. <laughs>